Hi and welcome to The Winning Factor. I'm Alan Aitken and on this show every week we're trying to identify a single characteristic of a couple of the races from Hong Kong that we'll look back on later as having been important in deciding the result. Well it's New Year's Day on Tuesday at Sha Tin and the first race we're going to look at at the lucky start meeting is race one. We're looking for a lucky start and our winning factor here is the draw. Now, this is a class four over 1600 metres and the in-form runner here is Smiling Pride. Many punters will be drawn to him. But the standout feature of this race is the lack of leaders. And along with that, the number of headgear changes. Four of the nine runners here have blinkers or cheek pieces going on. And Smiling Pride, Hey Run, Win Win, Ruby and Godspeed are the ones. Now that gear change might sharpen up one or two or all of those horses. But we think that the one horse who is in the best position to take advantage of the benefits of the gear change is Godspeed. And looking back, he actually ran in this race 12 months ago, the very same race. If we have a look at the video of that race, we see Godspeed uh, back in the field here. Uh, he's in the black and white colours. And he comes down the centre of the track with Unicron Jewelry, the eventual winner. And they have a great head-to-head -head contest down the straight. And Godspeed just missed out on this occasion. Now there was no disgrace in that. We've since seen Unicron Jewelry go on to win uh, races in a better class than that. And their paths really diverged following that race. Uh, Godspeed, he spent a lot of time on the sidelines with knee and splint problems. But he looks to have come back all right uh, for this season. He's had two runs back in and we're going to have a look at those. Firstly, his latest run over a thousand metres at Happy Valley. A little bit unsuitable that distance. And he was slowly away, got back in the field, but really rocketed home over the final stages to run into third. Now Godspeed's blinkers were off for that run, but we're going to have a look back at his first run this campaign, a more relevant race really, uh, over a similar distance to Tuesday's race, this time 1650 metres at Happy Valley, when he had the blinkers on. And he bounced out early here, he was put into the box seat, but as we see uh, later in the race, despite that good run, it's his first race for 10 months, he wasn't really fit enough to be a contender at the finish. And trainer David Hall has gone for the cheek pieces this time instead of the blinkers. And if those bits of gear can sharpen up Godspeed again, he's had those two runs now under the belt, he should be fitter. And I think he's really in a position to take advantage of what looks a very slowly run race. If we go to the map, he could even lead what looks a slowly run race. Now the danger of that obvious lack of speed in the race is that other connections might devise new tactics and we do end up with a faster tempo than expected, that often happens. But this is why gate one is even more important. It gives his jockey Karis Teton some options. So in race one, the tip is Godspeed. His winning factor, the draw. It looks a slowly run race, which should suit him from the inside, but even if we do end up with some more leaders than we expected, I think gate one gives him all the options and every chance to profit from however the race is run. The other race we're going to look at for New Year's Day is race nine. This is the traditional uh, first feature race of the new year in Hong Kong, the Chinese Club Challenge Cup. It's a group three and our winning factor here is the weights. Now this is an excellent field as it is uh, pretty much every year. Uh, group one winner, beauty only, heads the weights. We have some good up and comers like Conti, Rattan and nothing I like more as well. We're going to have a look at some statistics uh, for the history of the Chinese Club Challenge Cup over the past 20 years and see if we can uh, find a way towards a winner there and really it's uh, not a lot of help. Uh, first of all we, we have a look at the winning ages and uh, we can see that the four, five and six year olds uh, have dominated the race. Um, that doesn't really help us because most horses in this race are of those ages. And also the dominant trainers, Tony Cruz, John Size and John Moore. Again, not all that helpful as they have eight of the 12 runners on Tuesday. But where we can start to find things down and separate them is when we have a look at the handicap history of this and other Group 3 races in Hong Kong. Now we're going to have a look at a graphic for the Group 3 handicap races overall first. And this pie chart shows the difference between horses carrying 123 pounds or more and 120 
two pounds or less. And you can see there's a big discrepancy there for the horses carrying the lighter weights. They've won 63% of these races. But now we're going to look more specifically at this particular race, the Chinese Club Challenge Cup. In the last 20 years, it's the horses in the middle of the weights who've really dominated the affair. And that tells us something, that tells us they're horses with a smattering of class already, but maybe without the achievements at that stage to warrant them having big weights. And I think firmly in this category comes nothing I like more. Now he's a five-year-old, he's trained by John Size, there's two ticks, and he's got 121 pounds, so he's right in the middle of the weights. Now earlier this season, uh, there was a tendency to think that maybe nothing I like more's best was already behind him because it was very disappointing in the Celebration Cup and the Shah Tin Trophy. But we're going to have a look at his latest run. John Size gave him two months off, brought him back for the Hong Kong Mile, and this was a sharp improvement, and he looks on the way back. You can see him here in the bright green colours. He wins the start and Joe Marrera decides he doesn't want to lead the race so he eases looking for a trail and he just never got one. He was always three wide facing the breeze and yet we see him in the straight. He charges up, he's challenging for second behind the runaway winner Beauty Generation and he's still in the fight for that runner up spot right until the last 100 metres when the tough run really told on him. That was more like the nothing I like more we expected to see as he got older and uh, we thought from the classic mile last year he would graduate to be one of our top group one milers. And the benefit of him having taken a detour along that path is that he gets into Tuesday's race without having a top line milers weight. So the tip in race nine, nothing I like more. His winning factor, the weights. He's a top class horse who hasn't quite uh, got there yet but now he's back on track and I think we'll look back later in the season on this race and think how well handicapped he really was. So that's it from the winning factor for this week. Good luck on the lucky start day, New Year's Day, and we'll see you next time.